Um, yeah, welcome all of you um, and thank you for turning up in star such great numbers. It's really um, wonderful to see this program um, getting more exposure and um, lots of different people from lots of different areas of justice, all the art world, um, learning about it and hopefully after I finish speaking and we speak as well, um, you'll be micro ambassadors and you can go out there and spruik it in other courts as well. Um, I'm going to do a chronological um, slideshow and um, I'll speak to some of them and it's going to be really broad brush, brush strokes because there is so much to talk about in seven minutes. However, afterwards, if you see me around, please um, come, come and speak to me. So I am the uh, project manager and the curator of Urban Campfires. And I am employed by Belgium Avenue Neighbourhood House, of which Sue Kent, my manager, an amazing human being, is here somewhere, yeah, up the back, hiding. Um, and Belgium Avenue Neighbourhood House also incorporates um, Collingwood Neighbourhood House, which is just down the road on the um, housing estate. And um, the exhibition turns over every six months. So we have six months within which to source artists' artworks and roll out workshops and then get the works up on the walls. Um, sometimes it's themed, sometimes it's not themed. Um, we also, as part of our program, um, uh, like to uh, help develop skills amongst community members. So Ching Ching is one of our stars um, and over the years um, she has assisted us in all forms of installation and, and design as well. And she'll talk more about that hopefully. Um, so um, I first became involved as a facilitator in April 2015. I was a facilitator of the workshop and that was with the Hotham Street ladies who you may know for they, uh, they make everything out of icing sugar. Um, and I did another workshop in October called Duck and Weave and that was um, a workshop that involved the woodwork department at the Royal Talbot Rehabilitation Centre and a group of knitters from the Holden Street neighbourhood house and we came together to make three flying ducks, which talked about domesticity, but it also talked about um, artwork, feminism, women's work, but also bringing in the woodwork making element as well. Um, a brief history of the um, program, Magistrate Fanning has spoken a little bit about that, so I don't want to go too much over it, but the main underlying um, mechanism is art for community engagement and it is um, that which facilitates everything that ends up on the walls and in the glass cabinet as well. And those issues relate back to themes of social justice. So we are the only community art program based in a court um, and it's really a privilege to be part of that and, um, and really quite rewarding to see at the end of six months what does go up and, and the re reactions to it. Um, it can be challenging too. It can be um, slightly frustrating um, working with community members. Um, plans change a lot, so you have to be quite flexible and Liz will probably talk maybe a little bit more about that with Heidelberg. Um, there are financial constraints. Um, art workers will always bang on about how there's never enough money and there's never enough time. Um, and we also produce a full colour catalogue and have a launch to celebrate our um, exhibition and you will have on your seat a brochure of our upcoming launch which is on the 23rd of May, Thursday at 2 o'clock, which you're most welcome to come to. So community art, and I'm going to define it really, really loosely, 
is working with a group of people and they are the principal drivers and instigators of the ideas and the concepts and the outcomes. And then from that, facilitator is um, selected, appropriate facilitator, and my job is to coordinate everybody and all the relationships and make sure that um, what we get is an outcome that clearly voices that group's expressions and interests and concerns. It can sometimes morph and bleed into other forms of art, such as public art, social practice, participatory art, and can collaborate with quite unusual, unexpected other partners like local businesses, for example. Um, so producing this exhibition, so how we actually get to be on the walls. Um, so my role is to go out into Yarra, which is a suburb such as Collingwood, Fitzroy, Richmond, um, North Carlton, bits of Alfington, Clifton Hill, Abbotsford. Have I forgotten any other? Um, so I will um, source works from early career to established artists. So for example, um, on the walls there is artworks by Finbar Art Class, who are a neighbourhood house in Richmond. And I've got a few works of those, I think, upstairs, just outside. Oh, no, that's not true. It's in meeting room one. There's some works in there. Um, two um, artists who have global careers as well. Um, Tom Civil, who is on the bottom of that stairwell, um, who also did some work at the Heidelberg Court, which Liz will talk about and Jordan Morani, who is up on level two in meeting room two. So I think it's really important that all artists at all careers are um, interspersed together. It validates everybody's voice. So I put out an, um, an expression of interest every six months. That goes out to all the neighbourhood houses in Yarra. It also goes out to all the partnerships organisations that we have formed and also um, the Neighbourhood Justice Centre have their contacts, so it goes out to all those people. Um, and from there, I also actively approach organisations that I might be interested to work with, um, organisations such as the Artful Dodgers. Um, and you will notice there's a lot of building going on at the moment up the street with the Collingwood Arts Precinct. So when that comes to fruition, I will be knocking on their doors and trying to form partnerships with them as well. I also uh, keep my eye out for um, artists who are exhibiting, um, whether it be in Yarra or whether they're social justice, um, the topics of social justice um, would be appropriate for these works. And um, in my cyber travels, mostly, because I can't get to all the exhibitions and openings that I would like to. And I also ask, the Yarra Arts Offices, of which we have Cara here, if they have any hot tips. Marie Foles, who is um, not here tonight, who is NJC staff, also gives me lots of um, um, connects with groups that she's been working with. So it is a, a two-way conversation between Barn and the NJC. So how does the art change the environment? Um, Justin Fanning, uh, sorry, Magistrate Fanning has um, already mentioned that and Bindi, you have touched on it too. I think it's the energy that it brings into the space and it works on so many levels for me, I think, and, and for the viewers. I think it works on a physical, emotional, political and a cultural level and spiritual and there'd be so many more levels that I haven't thought about yet, but you know, um, your visitors here and if you connect with the work, it'd be great for you to let me know how you feel as well. It makes the place more welcoming and alleviates the stress and the anxiety of um, people who have to use the centre who are perhaps not here for the most um, pleasant of reasons. The text that um, texts that are placed next to the works also add the artist's own voice. So quite often I try and get um, that in quotations and an explanation of how the work might feed back into Yarra or might feed back into a social justice issue. 
This is um, Burst and the Mask Project, which I worked on uh, last April. And I'm going to use that as an example. Um, the Burst, which was installed in that glass cabinet, I don't have more photos of them, unfortunately. That filled that space with colour and bright optimism and it was upbeat. And it spoke about the, posit the power of positive energy and the, a group of all abilities participants from Holden Street Neighbourhood House um, made some ceramic masks for that. And those masks spoke about the masks that we all wear um, as we go through our day, we all put them on different ones at different times and just examining why we do that, why we feel the need to do that. And while people look at this and read, they're distracted for a moment. And they're also respected because they have things on the walls which they can relate to and makes them, um, it makes they're, they're worthy of, of looking at art just as anybody else should be. I mean, there's not enough art in in our in public institutions, but I'm not, don't get me started about that one. Um, and it instigates conversations. It instigates conversations between staff and their clients. Um, lots of um, service providers have said that when they walk into a meeting room, they will start a conversation and it might be based on the photo or the collage or the painting that's on the wall and that will then lead into the conversation as to why they're there and what needs to be done. The staff as well who work here are very fortunate. Every six months they get new beautiful work to look at. Um, and I know that would make me happy if I was in a workspace like that. Um, so um, it provides voices um, for groups. Um, they're minorities mostly, um, and some of them are the most vulnerable, like children. This workshop here was um, titled Trophies for Self. We did that with a group of Year 3 students from Joseph St. Joseph's Primary, which is right behind us, right on the corner. Most of the children um, in that class were uh, culturally and li linguistically diverse, and a lot of them live in the housing estate. There was no art room at this school. Their resources were very, very limited. As part of the workshop, I we were able to provide them with time at Slow Clay Studio, which is up here on Keel Street, and they got to, the, to experience what it's like to work in a full ceramics space. And they produced trophies for themselves over, over the six weeks with two facilitators. They identified that what they were best at and then they made trophies and also medals and certificates for themselves. And when we had the launch that day, Louise handed out their certificate and put their medal on. Um, and that was also great because they had a drum circle and a um, drumming circle and, a, and um, singing, dancing class as well at the opening. So that was really, and that was just right here where you're sitting. So that was great to bring that into this space as well. Um, so how could we expand this um, project? Like you said, Bindi, it should be in every court and I totally agree. Um, we have done some work in Heidelberg Court and Shepparton Court. So Court Services Victoria did come out here and were inspired by what they saw and asked us to engage in a program. Liz will talk more about Heidelberg. Um, and we managed to get stage one up in Shepparton. I'm not sure if anyone here uses or is familiar with those courts. Each model, I th each time we go to a new court, I think there needs to be an adjustment and that's going to be based on the particular court who uses them and the community. And the, the person that we, who will manage that will need to be a champion of this cause as there will be challenges that will arise also, and all sorts of unexpected challenges, sometimes things you, can, you can't even plan for. 
I would also like to say that having this, if you are someone who manages or runs a court and could advocate, it builds relationships with so many community groups. I mean, I'm fortunate that I go out there and engage and, and so do other members of my team. We and I get to build and not, Neighbourhood Justice Centre get to build these incredible relationships. And we've got some, we've got Marie here from Willow View and we've done lots of work with Willow View Centre who are seniors and they have, the light's not on in that children's playroom, but they have done an incredible um, collage for the kids and a mobile that's been in there and we've had a long-standing relationship with them. And it helps um, heal broken relationships with certain community groups. It helps aims and you could target and um, groups that may be problematic and you can really listen to them and you can build some, you can build trust. And with that come enormous rewards. Like to also, on that note, finish off with um, reflecting on the work that's in the glass cabinet at the moment, which is by Mahubo Suleiman, and Mahubo is here tonight. Mahubo does lots of workshops um, and has, is really active around Yara, involved in lots of groups and markets. And we would like to find a community group or community groups who may like to work with Mahubo and us and the Neighbourhood Justice Centre to be part of this wonderful program. So put word out or if you're part of a program or know someone, please let us know. And I think I'm done. Thank you.